Uh, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, welcome. Uh, welcome to the board members in attendance. Welcome to our stakeholders and welcome to CalPERS team members. I'm David Takearts. I'm from the CalPERS Office of Stakeholder Relations. And on behalf of the organization, I bid you welcome to our annual stakeholder forum. We have approximately 115 stakeholders registered to be with us here today. Uh, and that includes stakeholders who represent members, retirees, employers, um, and just interested members of the public who have a vested stake in how CalPERS functions and performs uh, as a major economic driver and key part of California. Um, we also have folks watching live on our board webcast. This is a board meeting, so we have sort of a, a simultaneous thing going on here where we have a live Zoom experience for those of you that want to participate directly in the uh, annual forum, but you can also feel welcome to just watch on the board webcast um, and public comment will be uh, available for both methods. Uh, so just briefly, um, the stakeholder forum is intended to provide an opportunity for stakeholders to interact, engage with, key, with CalPERS on key issues of concern to you and your members. You know, we started this last year and it went very well. Um, you know, I admit I was, I was one of the architects of it. it we had a nice plan, we had a program in place. Uh, folks, may, you may have participated where uh, we had moved groups uh, around the campus. We had various sessions going on. We had signs for heaven's sakes, color coding. Uh, and then all of that goes out the window this year, of course, uh, since we're not able to do any of that live and in person. So <clears throat> COVID shot that little idea down. So we are therefore um, compelled to do it through this virtual platform. The teams worked hard to try to make this as good and engaging experience as possible. Again, this is not our standard board meetings uh, with agenda items and really staff interacting just with board. We do have opportunities here for stakeholders to engage and be part of this dialogue. Um, but unfortunately, it's just not quite as good as all being in a room together. So a little bit of that texture or that dynamic of back and forth is, is probably going to be lost a little bit because we do have to keep this organized. Otherwise, we'll have 120 people talking over each other and uh, it would be a little bit of a, a chaotic situation. So we're doing our best, I promise, uh, to make this as efficient and smooth a process for everyone as possible here today. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the agenda and then I wanna turn it over um, to our board president right away. Um, <clears throat> looking over here. So you should be seeing an agenda. Does everyone see that on their screen now? Is that popping up? Very good. Um, so we'll kick off with some housekeeping and, log and logistics. I'm gonna tell you how we can interact uh, with each other on this platform, how it works. Um, our newly reelected board president will, will offer some opening remarks and then we'll turn it to our CEO, Marcy Frost. The first session should start somewhere around 10 o'clock or maybe a little bit earlier. And this will focus on the member experience, uh, tracking the life cycle of, of typical members from when they first become members through their working life, through retirement um, and beyond, uh, both from a pension and healthcare um, perspective. Then we'll break for lunch somewhere around 1140 um, and then come back and focus on the triple focus of healthcare. Uh, and then lastly, um, our final session will be focused on our, our great work of 2021, which is the asset liability management cycle. And that should put us uh, at, for a closing time somewhere around 4 p.m. today. Real quick on the housekeeping logistics, you're probably like those of you who haven't used Zoom before are probably clicking around right now trying to figure out uh, what the options are. So here's the, here's the baseline for, for the stakeholders. Um, so for the best experience for everybody, um, we are we do have participants on mute by default, and you're essentially in a darkened theater experience. So uh, there are I do there's people logging in right now. Currently, there's over there's so far there's 53 attendees. We expect that to about double here as folks get logged on. Um, so you're currently just able to see me and, and other panelists, uh, but not each other. So the you don't have to worry about having your webcam on. You don't have to worry about um, dressing up. You can let your imagination run wild on your attire. Um, it's, it's fine. Um, you're not going to be able to see each other. But you will be able to directly engage with CalPERS presenters and board members. Um, so two ways to do that. Number one, at the bottom of your screen, if you kind of hover your mouse around, you should see an option that says raise hand. Um, what that does is kind of shoot a signal uh, to me and the other panelists that you want to um, either provide a comment 
or ask a question. And there will be times uh, throughout all the sessions where you can do that. Uh, we'll, we'll be calling for questions and comments. If you raise your hand, then the moderator will come to you and unmute your line, and you will be able to speak out into the group. Okay, so this is how you can actually be speaking and dialoguing and everybody can hear you, the panelists and the other stakeholders. If you prefer, you can just go to the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, kind of hover your mouse around, you should, should see a Q&A button, and you can type your questions in. Uh, those will come to the panelists and to the moderator, and we will read that question out for you. Okay, so if you type in your question, it's going to be read on your behalf. If you want to actually verbally ask questions, raise your hand and we'll call and, un and uh, unmute you and you can actually verbally ask questions. Okay. If you're only on your phone, and we know that there's probably some of you who maybe aren't at a computer or for whatever reason we're preferring to use your cell phone, we really can't directly interact with you on Zoom. There's nothing to let us know that that number wants to speak or ask. So go ahead and shoot an email to me. Um, Many of you stakeholders know me. It's david.takearts at calpers.ca.gov uh, or the calpers underscore stakeholder underscore relations at calpers email and um, shoot an email to either of those and we'll make sure that the question gets taken care of. Uh, if you're logged into Zoom, but also calling in on your phone, okay? So maybe your laptop doesn't have a microphone uh, or it doesn't have a very good one and you, you, you're both calling in on a phone and you can see us on the screen, please go into the chat box, okay? So there's a chat button uh, and tell us what, which phone number is yours. That way we can kind of connect your name and phone number and then we'll, we will be able to call on you or see your questions come in. If you don't, um, we won't be able to identify uh, which number to unmute if you wanna speak. Um, and lastly, um, because this is a board me meeting and we do have board members present, we need to follow the rules for pu open public meetings, and that means including opportunity for formal public comment. So at the end of each of the sessions, so three different times throughout the day, there will be opportunity for, pu for public comment. You'll have the typical three minutes. Uh, we'll start with folks that are in the Zoom call that want to provide a formal public comment. Um, and then we also, if you are watching on the board webcast, you can call the phone number that's there on the page, and we will be able to bridge you over from that call into the, into the um, forum, and you can provide public comment that way. Okay, so there will be three opportunities for public comment. So that's it for the housekeeping now. What I'd like to do is turn it over um, to our board president, Henry Jones, and I'll give him the opportunity to welcome you and kick off the second annual stakeholder forum. Mr. President, please go ahead. And thank you very much, David. Um, and good morning and welcome to our second annual stakeholders forum. Uh, this forum is one way that the CalPERS can ensure we understand the needs of our members, employers, and stakeholders. You'll notice that we're joined by some of my colleagues on the board. The purpose of the forum is to promote interactive dialogue. The board members and our professional team is here to answer your questions and hear your feedback on the issues before us. I strongly encourage your participation. We value a broad range of thoughts and ideas for everyone here today. So please don't hesitate to make yourself heard. That, that's what's lead, that what lead to innovative and creative solutions and help to make CalPERS an even better organization. We're eager to hear from you, so please don't be shy. And thank you for coming. And I'll turn it over to our CEO, Marcy Frost, to share her vision and priorities for 2021. Marcy. All right, thank you, uh, President Jones. So good morning, everyone. And again, just it's my pleasure to be able to welcome you to our second uh, stakeholder forum. Uh, even though we're having to gather virtually this year, as David described, without all of the you know normal logistics and being in the same room and hearing the questions from one another, uh, in a more live format. It is a priority for me, for the organization and for the board that we're able to stay connected throughout this time. Uh, we have a lot of work coming up and we need to do that together. So every member, every employer and stakeholder really is crucial uh, to our ability to helping CalPERS to be successful, whether success is defined on our investment returns, whether success is defined on our member satisfaction scores, it really takes every one of us having mutual alignment around our outcomes. 
And our uh, number one outcome, of course, is to provide retirement security to almost 2 million members here in the state of California. So we are driven by our mission, uh, both on the pension side as well as the health benefit side. And I do appreciate that this entire group is aligned to common goals. So I think that's really the lesson for uh, 2020 as uh, we took a little bit of a, a look back at uh, this past year. And it's also the foundation upon which we continue to move forward into 2021. I, I think we're all watching the news as COVID-19 vaccinations are ramping up. We are facing, uh, continue to face a, a very difficult time in our communities. Uh, I don't think we're out of the woods yet, but I know that we're making significant progress and I really believe that the resiliency, not only of CalPERS, but of uh, the citizens of here in the state of California will really help us to be successful uh, in 2021. Uh, so my goal today is that we continue to work together so let me uh, start, uh, start with giving you a little bit of context about what to look forward to uh, this year. Uh, we are continuing to work remotely and I'm proud of the team. Uh, they really did not miss a beat in being able to continue to provide service to our members, uh, continue to provide service to our public employers. Uh, even though we were forced to leave our buildings, we did find alternative ways in order to uh, provide the really important services that both the members, the employer, employers, and other stakeholder groups have really come to rely upon. Uh, we believe that those uh, standards uh, that we set in place prior to COVID-19 about what we wanted our performance targets to be and, uh, and the service level targets to be, that we've continued to work within those ranges. And we've gotten pretty positive feedback from our members, pretty positive feedback from our employers about the open and communication or open communication as well as the continuing uh, high marks on service. We did close, uh, just turning quickly to the portfolio, we did close uh, last uh, fiscal year at a 4.7 return on our portfolio. Uh, that was short of the 7% return target, as we know. And we know that that has a real impact on our public employers. Um, but we did beat the national average, which, which was roughly 3.1 to 3.2, which does, I believe, and I think our investment team believes that it does validate our investment strategy going forward. It has also set us up to take advantage of the current financial market conditions and really maximize the risk adjusted returns uh, that we need to grow the portfolio 7% every year. So we are beginning 2021 in a, in a pretty strong position, which is important because we're also facing organizational uh, decisions. And we know that uh, these decisions will impact everyone here today. My commitment is that we'll be very thoughtful about that. We'll be very inclusive about that. Uh, we'll be also very transparent about the decisions that uh, we will be making within the organization or that the board will be making over the course of this year. Among uh, the most consequential decisions uh, underway right now is the selection of our new chief investment officer. As you know, the recruitment and the interviews are ongoing and we are following a disciplined process to ensure that the next CIO is, is an investor with the skills, the experience and the behaviors to re really lead a strong and talented investment team that we have here in CalPERS, um, as well as to grow our global portfolio. Another priority, which I know many of you are uh, paying close attention to, is what we call the ALM, or the Asset Liability Management Process, in which uh, we set the long-term investment goals and determine the associated uh, discount rate. We'll start the discussion today, and in the coming months, you will be able to hear and take part in the discussions, both at the Investment Committee, uh, ultimately the Finance and Administration Committee as well, and we do have workshops planned throughout the year, including uh, quarterly workshops with stakeholders so that you can see the data, the information that we will be presenting to the board throughout 2021. Uh, you also heard quite a bit yesterday, if you, any of you tuned in to our education sessions that we provided to the board, uh, you heard much around uh, health policy and our health purchasing. Uh, we are continuing to address the costs and the benefits of the coverages that we provide. Uh, we all know that these issues can be equally important to the pension benefits that you're receiving. So we'll be paying very close attention to providing you know, high quality, providing uh, appropriate access, and making sure that those are efficient for the employers who are providing them as well as for the members who are paying for them. Another CalPERS opportunity in 2021 is to lead on climate change. And I, and I do appreciate that some believe that we should stay focused uh, solely on investment returns. I appreciate that we have a group who believes that we should uh, reduce more exposure to 
uh, certain types of investments. Uh, but we do believe that engaging in this issue is all about ensuring that we, as a large institutional investor, have the right information to inform our global long-term strategy, that we will see risks associated with climate. It's one of the top three risks that we've identified for CalPERS. Um, but we also know that it's an economic issue, it's an environmental issue, and it's an equity issue. So CalPERS uh, remains invested in companies around the world, and we need to be assured that these companies understand how to change their business models to address the risk that we see. That's why really CalPERS has been a leader, I, I think a catalyst as well, galvanizing investors to use their collective assets to address climate change. Uh, through Climate Action 100, which is an engagement opportunity uh, that has about 540 investors who are now uh, working in that uh, group with more than 52 trillion assets uh, under management. So we believe that advocacy, engagement, and integration is the right approach for CalPERS. Member service is our number one priority, and you're going to hear more about that. We have Anthony Sweeney, who will be walking you through uh, the member servicing side of CalPERS. Above all else, we are a service organization that continues to strive for and achieve high marks for member service. Uh, we are proud to receive the feedback that we have gotten from the members, but we are also committed uh, to continue to improve upon our services. So ultimately, as we gather for the stakeholder forum, uh, CalPERS' focus must always be on working to achieve the returns that are necessary to support uh, delivering uh, member benefits, uh, providing affordable plans for our employer partners, and really just that retirement security is the number one mission, the number one goal of this organization. So in 2020, we did confirm that our strategy was sound. We know the team is strong and we are optimistic about the future because of our connection and our engagement with our stakeholders. We know that our stakeholders are actively engaged, very interested in the work of CalPERS, and we really appreciate your commitment and your attention. So again, that's what this forum is about, uh, continuing to provide communication, to be open to hear feedback about how we can do better, uh, be transparent as we possibly can be. And so we are very grateful for the support and the commitment to our mission. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to either Mr. Fox or Mr. Takearts. And uh, thank you. Look forward to interacting with you. Thank you very much, Ms. Frost. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and dive right into our first session. Um, again, this is the member experience. And as moderator for this session, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kelly Fox, who is the chief of CalPERS Office of Stakeholder Relations. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, David. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, our CEO and our board president uh, for their introductions and welcome to the first session of our second stakeholder forum with CalPERS. And I wanna acknowledge uh, Mr. Takearts and his team for their hard work to make uh, the stakeholder forum a reality for us. A lot of hours are put into the preparation and the presentation here. So David, Josh, Shauna, Renee, thank you very much for your work. So our first session will be the member experience, kind of taking you on a timeline from the beginning of your CalPERS uh, association all the way through the end to retirement uh, and collecting an annuity. So our Deputy Executive Officer of Customer Service and Support, Mr. Anthony Sweeney, will be our first speaker. Uh, then we'll have on our Health Account Management Division Chief, Rob Jarzombic, will talk about the health experience. And then Wayne Davis, our Chief of the Office of Public Affairs, will bring us through our communications. So our agenda for this particular session, uh, we'll go through the life cycle, the member experience for health, we'll be looking ahead, and then we'll talk about communications for our members and our employers. So without any further delay, I'd like to introduce Mr. Anthony Sweeney to talk about the retirement membership life cycle. Welcome, Anthony.